me today. I have a fun shaker card tutorial to share with you today featuring Newton's Nook's Sweater Weather stamp set. This stamp set was part of their latest release which has a lot of really cute, fun, wintry images included in this stamp set along with a couple of other really nice sentiments. I'm going to be using this stamp set today to create a shaker card that I'll be pairing with products from Lawn Fawn. To get started on my shaker card, I want to show you first the coloring process that I took for coloring these images. Now I'm only going to show you coloring of one of the images. I'm going to show you how I colored this adorable Newton image. However, I did color all the other images exactly the same type of way. I tried to use the same colors on each of the images and just adjusted where I colored each area with the different colors. So in this case, I colored different areas of the sweater with the purples and greens along the bottom portion of the trim. And then I added some of the pink and blue to the hat and the main part of the sweater. And I did the same kind of process for the other images by adding color in different areas but using the same markers. So as I color these images, you'll notice I'm adding color from my Zig Clean color markers along the areas where I want the color to be darkest, and I blend it out with my water brush. This is a really easy way to get sh the look of shading on your watercolor images using the Zig Clean color markers. I really love how it adds a little bit of dimension very quickly and easily to my images, and I don't have to work too hard at getting the colors to blend and add shading, and I don't end up with any hard lines from where I added extra shading because I went ahead and done the shading as I was coloring. So I added a few extra details to the cat with a little bit of stripes and also some blush on his cheeks and then that was going to and finish off my image. Now I did fussy cut those images out with my fine tip scissors. I have them set aside there along the right and I've got the Ready Set Snow stamp set and also the Add On Die set from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to be using these to create my snow globe shaker that my Newton's Nook images will be sitting inside of. This is a perfect example of showing how stamps and dies from other companies can mix and match together to create really great and really fun cards. I'm going to take that die set and I'm going to start die cutting it from some watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is Canson XL paper. It's the same paper that I used to color in my little images. I'm die cutting the outline that also die cuts the middle portion and I also use the snowy background as well. However, you'll notice I'm also die cutting the little snowy hill. I decided not to use that on the finished project but I did end up die cutting it and it is an option in case you do want to go ahead and do that. To add some shading to my snow globes, I'm using one of the dark brown Zig Clean color markers and also a bit of beige and I'm mixing them together onto my snow globe and then I'll go ahead and blend it out with my water brush. I think when you mix the colors together like this, you get a little bit more variation to the coloring and it helps give your images a bit more interest. Now on some of these snow globes, I'm going to be using the plain background, which I'm adding some of the little trees from the Lawn Fawn Ready Set Snow stamp set. I'm stamping these in some emerald ink from Altenu, but then on the background of two other snow globes, I'm actually going to be using that snowy background. And I watercolored that with the same colors that I'm using here for the flat background. So I'm just using some purples, pinks, I'm also going to end up adding some darker purple and darker blue to this as well. And I'm just creating layers to give myself a little bit of a variegated kind of wintry sky for the background of these snow globes. I'm being careful as I'm watercoloring because I want to make sure that I don't bleed the color on the trees because the ink that I used for the trees is not waterproof. So I want to make sure I'm being careful as I'm adding the watercoloring to the background here. I'm being very random with the placement of the color because of course colors in the sky are all over the place so I want to mimic that same look by adding the color in a bit more of a random fashion. So I also use that darker blue and darker purple like I mentioned and I'm also going to bring in some more pink to just brighten up the sky a little bit more. And again I use the same colors to color in the backgrounds on those die cut snowy backgrounds. Alright so now I'm going to go ahead and start putting these shakers together. This is very easy. I'll go ahead and show you how I did this. I'm first taking the snow globe that we stamped and colored and I'm adding a piece of acetate to the back side and that's going to adhere the acetate and create a window for our shaker elements. I've also die cut a piece of white cardstock from that same snow globe outline. This is the outline that does not cut out the center portion. You get both pieces in the die set. So I'm using the piece here that does not cut the little window. However, the snow globe that we stamped and watercolored did get die cut using the die that cuts out the window in the snow globe. Alright, so now I'm going to also adhere the snowy backdrop to a piece of white cardstock. This is the window piece. 
that was die cut from the snow globe die that cuts out the window. This is going to serve as the background for the little snow dots that we have die cut from this panel. So I'm just going to take that little piece and line that up along the back side here. Once I've adhered that down to the white snow globe die cut, I'm going to add adhesive to the back side of one of my little critters. This one here is the little fox. I'm going to line that up in the center area of where the snow globe is going to end up sitting. I'll set that aside and work on building my shaker now. I'm adding some foam tape two layers thick to the back side of my snow globe. I've cut some really skinny pieces to go around the outside edges of the snow globe itself. And I'm taking off the adhesive backing so that way as I apply these down onto the back side of my snow globe, I can maneuver them a bit better around the arc of the snow globe. If you don't remove the adhesive backing, they don't bend and twist as easily. I added some sequins and seed beads to the inside of my shaker. Those are sequins and seed beads from Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm just going to adhere the shaker backing that has our little critter attached to it on top of our little snow globe shaker here. I'll press that down after I've lined that up really good, and you can see how fun and adorable these shakers are. You could add all sorts of different things inside of these shakers, but I really love the look of the sequins and the beads. Here's a close-up look at how really cute that looks. And you'll also notice that I added a sentiment to the snow globes. I had forgotten to do it when I went to put the shaker together, and I didn't think of it till afterwards. So I ended up having to heat emboss that sentiment onto the snow globe after it was put together. But I do recommend going ahead and heat embossing the sentiment onto your snow globes before putting it together. I had just forgotten. Alright, so now for the card bases. The card bases are created using some Simon Says Stamp lavender and cotton candy card stocks. These are cut to be slightly smaller than 4 inches. I don't remember the exact dimensions I used for this, but about 4 inches is what I used. I'm also using the Love Is background stamp. I love this background. This has a lot of really beautiful love themed sentiments on here. And you could also, instead of using this background stamp, you could also use the smaller images that are included in the Sweater Weather stamp set to add a little bit of tone-on-tone -tone stamping to your card bases. So either way, it would work out. Now, I ended up using some Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink because it is a watermark ink, so it creates a tone-on-tone -tone effect, as you can see here. On the cotton candy, it's a little bit lighter than the lavender cardstock, which I'll show you right now. I'll go ahead and re-ink that background stamp. You can see how great that tone-on-tone -tone effect is. So I added some stitching detail using a Lawn Fawn border stitch die. And now I'm adding some tiny hearts from the Simon Says Stamp Envelope Liner die set. The Envelope Liner die set goes with a heart die that is super cute and perfectly sized to go onto these snow globes. I embellished those hearts with some Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle. And I also added a bit of Nouveau Drops in the clear color over top of these hearts on the snow globe just to give them a little bit more of a dimensional feel. So that's going to finish off my cards for today. I hope this has inspired you to create something fun with the Sweater Weather stamp set and also give you ideas for combining stamps and dies from other companies to create really fun and beautiful cards. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog where you can get more information on these cards including still pictures and products used. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can connect with us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as our blog. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye!